All right, so this is a question that comes up a lot from people with ages ranging from say 15 to 65 and older. The question is, Am I too old to learn math? I think this stems a lot from how we idolize a lot of mathematical prodigies such as Terence Tao or Carl Friedrich Gauss, and it aligns with other subjects like music and languages where we're constantly told that if we don't learn from a young age, we won't ever be able to learn it in the future. There are so many associations of mathematics with youth. You have the Olympiads, which is strictly grade school competition for mathematics. The Putnam is for undergrads. If you are a grown adult with a degree in mathematics, then you could try for a Fields Medal, but only if you're under 40. Up until the 1990s in the US, professors were forced to retire at the age of 65. So you had better have your mathematics career wrapped up by then. And for the average person, most of them don't interact with mathematics beyond, say, the age of 12 or 15. Even famous mathematicians like G.H. Hardy said that mathematics is a young man's game and that older mathematicians should focus on writing books. So what if you aren't a famous mathematician? What if you are just an average Joe that wants to learn some math? I'm here to tell you that you aren't too old to learn mathematics. Even if you are already 17, there is still some hope for you yet. Okay, but, but seriously, the truth is that it's never too late to learn mathematics. Your age and your level of commitment can make a big difference in your outcomes, however. And this has more to do with how much time you have available to you than anything else. The difference between someone learning at the age of 15 and someone learning at 45 is that the sole responsibility of a 15 year old is to study. They can commit to fully learning any topic that they wish because they aren't burdened with adult responsibilities yet. I am Loki. And I am burdened with glorious purpose. At 45, you need to work, and you might even have children to take care of. The challenge is finding the time. This comes down to a lot of time management and will sacrifice. Personally, I didn't really start learning mathematics until I was in my 20s. As far as professors go, I think I'm the only one I know that didn't take any calculus in high school. My passion for mathematics picked up really late, and when I learned calculus at 19, I found out I really enjoyed learning and studying mathematics. So for the next decade, I did nothing but study mathematics. I got my PhD at 29, and not terribly late, but a couple years behind many who graduated high school at the same time I did. I have since taught a lot of students, and I have witnessed many students get through their math classes even when they are in their 30s and 40s, and sometimes with kids to look after too. There are all sorts of reasons why someone might want to come back for a math degree. Uh, a lot of my students over 30 have actually came out of the military and they were using their GI Bill to get through an engineering or a mathematics program. Others had kids early and waited until their kids got older before going to college themselves. Now, learning mathematics is certainly feasible no matter how old you are. But if you're aiming for a career in mathematics, the real limitation you're facing is actually time. Not only do you need to have time to actually study and practice mathematics, say hours each day, but if you want to get a PhD in mathematics, then there are some more concrete limitations. To get a bachelor's degree in mathematics, it takes about four years of study. This is if you start at Calculus 1. If you have to start earlier, then it's going to take more time to get through it. Then after the bachelor's degree, it could be another five years of study or more before you can get a PhD. If you want to be a professor, then that could take another five years of postdoc life. And there are still no guarantees. Altogether, from starting undergrad to getting a professor position could take 14 or more years, which might not be a reasonable time investment depending on how old you are. In my last video, I talked about how to get ahead in your math classes. That same advice also applies uh, to first learning mathematics. Uh, there are tons of resources for free online learning, and even ones that cost money aren't always terribly expensive. You could use Khan Academy as a free resource to get you started learning no matter what stage you're at, from basic arithmetic and pre-kindergarten uh, mathematics, all they have two differential equations. I actually use it to teach my kids who are in kindergarten. I also send my students who are in differential equations to Khan Academy for more lessons. Another option is Brilliant. Uh, Brilliant.org has sponsored a number of my videos, uh, not this one in particular, and I highly recommend them for learning anything. It basically takes any subject and it turns it into a little game for you to practice and learn. If you work that way, then it's not a bad way to get going. But if you just want to broaden yourself and learn about mathematics and how mathematics is conducted, then that is totally feasible. Uh, there are tons of, say, popular math books that you can go and read, and if you want to get your fingers into it, then a good elementary number theory textbook would be a great place to start.
If you want to learn more about the resources that are available for teaching, then you can actually just go watch this video here. In any case, I just want to say that you're never too old to learn something new. And I want to thank you for watching this video, and I hope you have a great day.